Hey, what's up? Welcome back. You're watching the first episode in a series where together we'll build out a brand new short-term rental marketplace. So this is going to be a place where guests can browse a bunch of different listings and hosts can list their spaces for rent. And the, the intention here is number one, to experiment with lots of different Rails technologies and play around with different APIs. Number two is to build a marketplace where folks could list their properties on the marketplace. Uh, and number three is to sort of like figure out ways that we can combat some of the issues that folks have with existing short-term rental marketplaces like Verbo and Airbnb and uh, booking.com. So we're just gonna kind of like start from scratch, build our own marketplace. And another thing that I wanted to take away from this was just sharing how I think about all of the different steps for building a project end to end. So I've actually done like zero planning for this at all. And I wanted to kind of walk through how I might do that. So I have a Notion doc up. All it has is a title here, short term uh, rent, uh, rental marketplace. And so one of the ways that I can sort of think through building out a marketplace like this is thinking through all of the nouns that are in the system. So we have users, we have listings. Those are going to have uh, when someone books a listing, we might have a booking or a reservation. We're also gonna have some two-way messaging system. So we might have like a message, we might have uh, a message, uh, maybe there's like a thread or something, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then inside of users, we're gonna have two types of users. We're gonna have guests and we're gonna have hosts. So that'll, that'll provide an interesting problem that we'll have to find a solution to. We're gonna have listings and these listings might be composed of a bunch of different stuff about the listing. We're definitely gonna have listing photos. Uh, maybe we also have listing videos. I just saw a brand new YC, YC company from 2021 and they're called Playhouse. And it's basically like TikTok for Zillow, kind of it's like a mixture of these videos with music in the background showing off a listing. When I went on there and checked it out, it was pretty interesting, but all of the listings were like super, super expensive, like in the many millions. Um, but what's cool about that is they all had videos. So that I think might be an interesting sort of spin on the existing short-term uh, rental marketplace systems. Um, so yeah, so step one, I'm gonna go through and sort of list out all of the different resources, meaning the nouns in the system. And then this is kind of like already getting into like design a little bit. Um, and instead of going too far down the road, we can also think of like a name um, and we wanna think of like the tech stack that we might wanna build this in um, and other, other sort of technical considerations as you're building out maybe like a brand new business. This is kind of like ground zero or day one of trying to like build a startup, right? Is you're trying to think through a lot of the different pieces, uh, maybe at like a hackathon, like a startup weekend hackathon, this is the kind of stuff that you would be ideating about. Um, but most importantly, it's important to, tr to actually like go out and talk to users. Uh, so maybe this is called UXR, UXR, it's like user experience research. And so one thing that we'll want to do pretty early on is actually go and talk to some users and ask like, um, where they booked the most recent short term rental space or, um, yeah, like, um, what goes into the decision when picking a listing, things like this, where we want to like actually figure out number one, is someone going to book? And number two, would they use the system? Number three, like why did you list your house on the short term versus long term market? Because maybe we want to pivot at some point and like, pivot to long-term or pivot to short-term. We got to really like listen to, to the users. One thing, one common thread that I have heard a lot about um, Airbnb in particular is the lack of price transparency. So as you're browsing around, you, you might see a price that looks like, oh, at like $100 a night. But then when you actually go through the whole booking process, it ends up being significantly more. And that's because of fees. That's because of taxes. It's because of maybe, um, yeah, the fees that, um, the host is adding on between cleaning fees and the fees that Airbnb is adding on uh, to take their sort of cut as part of the transaction. Also, 
oftentimes the cleaning fee isn't well represented when folks are browsing around. So including maybe maybe that's sort of a, an angle that we take. And I know for a fact, this is one of the things that a lot of users complain about when using Airbnb in particular. And so that's kind of like one way that we could um, differentiate is by having very transparent pricing. In fact, like maybe we um, tr try to figure out like a mission statement or something and like what actually differentiates our product from the competitors. And so here we might say like a short term uh, rentals with transparent pricing or something like this, like always know exactly how much you'll pay when browsing. And I know there's like ways to hack around this and you can look at Airbnb from different countries or you can sort of browse booking.com or home away or a lot of these different listing sites from different countries, which actually enforce price transparency. And so then you kind of like get a better look at it. But I think everyone really wants price transparency. And so maybe that's sort of one of the differentiators. Um, maybe for a name, we can call it like clear BNB or something so that trans we're like leaning into that transparency thing. In terms of the tech stack, I really think when you're picking a tech stack for a startup, um, you have uh, you have a lot of different things that can feed into a decision for picking a tech stack, right? Um, but I think that the most important factor when you're picking the tech stack is which stack are you most comfortable with and you can move the fastest with. As a startup, I think that is really the, the most important thing. It's not, is this the right tool for the job necessarily? It's, uh, I mean, at a high level, you're not going to want to pick a tool where there's not a lot of support or plugins or, you know, I don't think you would want to pick like a brand new sort of uh, tech framework or tech stack that's not necessarily even out of like V0.1 or something. But as long as it's a, a tech stack that you're familiar with and that you feel comfortable with and that you think that you can be productive in, that's the stack that I think you should pick. It's not necessarily like, you know, if you're trying to pick between Next.js and Rails and Django and Laravel, Right. If you have experience in JavaScript, but you don't know Python or Ruby or PHP, then pick the next JS, right? If you have experience in Ruby, but not in Python, pick Rails over Django. Uh, so I've actually worked with all four of those, um, but I prefer to work in Ruby and I prefer to work in Rails. So that's actually what I'm going to, uh, that's what we'll, we'll use is uh, Rails. Um, and then I guess like the next thing is to really just dig into the design here. So this whole episode will all be about kind of just like the planning process or like the early stage of planning process. Um, and we also want maybe like some sort of like to do's where we're going to need like a list of stuff that we actually have to build out. So um, we'll have to have some sort of authentication. We'll have some way to like uh, crud for listings. We'll need a way to uh, a way to book. Um, we'll need a uh, a way to message. We'll also need, what else? We're going to need a way. Um, let's see. Um, we will, I, I've got like a bunch of ideas about features that we can add early on, but one of them is uh, identity, some sort of identity verification. Um, maybe even like background check. Uh, we can do document checks to just see if they have the right driver's license. We can do like a phone number check. Uh, and then underneath underneath messaging, right? We want at a minimum, we want like two way messaging between one guest and one host. Sometimes if you're traveling in a group, you can add like other people who are in your party to a thread and then you can all chat with the host. But I think in the beginning, we want at least just two way messaging between one guest and one host. There's other features we could build in here like um, canned responses from hosts. This is a common feature of many of these platforms is if you like right when someone books, if you always say, thanks so much for booking, like we're looking forward to hosting you or whatever, then you might have a canned response that just kind of like plops in and is sent. You might also have like scheduled messages. That's like um, right before, like maybe two days before they check in, you automatically send them an email with like the door codes and then uh, maybe the day of checkout, you send them an email like a couple hours before checkout reminding of the checkout procedures. So that's an example of that. Ways to book this. I think we need um, like some payment uh, methods. <laughs> I think we'll we'll use Stripe for that, obviously. And then we need like a way to um, 
I guess, okay, so the other thing here that's part of a listing is we'll need the calendar. So we need some sort of like calendaring uh, system. And calendaring is actually surprisingly challenging. Yeah, so just messing around with dates and time zones and all that is, is kind of a nightmare, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, we also want some way to like discover. I guess this is part of like ways to book. This is discovery. So uh, on, on most of these platforms, there's a map where you can sort of roughly see the location of the listing. For privacy purposes, we don't wanna put the pins of the exact address directly on the map. So we would wanna pick some sort of like way to show a radius around or like randomly drop a pin within some radius of where, uh, where the listing actually is. You'll wanna also be able to fil by, filter by the dates that the listing is open, things like that. Uh, okay, what else have we got here? There's probably lots of other things with messaging that we could do like translation and like conf like ensuring on platform discussion. Because I think a lot of times folks will like, uh, in the first couple of messages, they'll say like, oh, uh, let's book off platform. And if they're doing that, then you're losing, we're losing revenue, right? For people who are trying to book. So it, one of the ways that some of these platforms do this is they will strip out or they'll sort of like redact phone numbers, email addresses, websites, anything that like happens pre-booking in the message, they will redact it so that you can't take the conversation off platform to go book off platform. So that's a pretty common feature. Um, yeah, okay, so this is, I think this is what we're gonna try to build, clear BNB with Rails. Uh, we've got to do some user research. If you have a short-term rental or if you have uh, stayed in a short-term rental before, I would love to hear from you. Maybe just kind of like uh, hit me up on Twitter at CJavDev and we'll just chat about your experience. And then, yeah, maybe we'll use some of your ideas as input into the system. And then we'll kind of like in the in future episodes, we'll go through the process of building all this stuff out. We have uh, other episodes on this channel where we've covered a lot of these things before, but uh, I think it'll be fun to kind of build something a little bit more complex so in the last series, we did a blog that had some cool features. In the series before that, we built out a tool for tracking some stock, uh, stock trades that were happening uh, through the SEC for insider trading. This one will be all about building this giant platform for, um, yeah, for short-term rentals. So I hope that you'll uh, subscribe and stick around. And uh, yeah, in the next video, we'll, we'll break ground and start writing some code. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in that one. Mm -hmm.